Hi, I'm Stuart from SV Leadworks and welcome to the next video. So in today's video, I'm going to give a talk about exactly the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to reveal exactly what's in my toolbox. Um, might be a few surprises in there and <laughs> I'll also um, show you all the tools that I, that I used for the trade. Um, I just thought it'd be quite useful if you want to get into the trade yourself, um, just so you, you've got an idea of um, the tools that you are going to need to get and um, this was actually suggested in the comment section and I thought you know what that's a pretty good idea so let's get into this okay so first we're going to start with the hand tools these are just the tools that we're going to use mostly um, I think I'll start with the tool that I hit the lead with the most and you know what the, exactly what that is it is of course no it's not that <laughs> it is of course the dresser um, these come in various different sizes this is kind of like a a middle of the range one um, they are quite durable they do last for quite a long time I've had this one for quite a while actually um, and actually the older ones are the better because they start to, to get worn you can see there that this one here is starting to curve on the front there so when they're sort of like nice and round like that they're not going to mark the lead as much um, and actually when I first get them when they're new and they're quite sharp I actually get a sanding knife and I just scrape all the way along the edges to round it off just so it just takes out any dresser marks so I've, I've had this one for a while I have actually got one in here that I've had a lot longer and you'll be able to see <laughs> and actually look how these this did probably actually start off the same size and you can see how worn actually this one is in fact this one's gone too much because when you're holding it when you're dressing it actually bangs your knuckles because it's just worn down too much but it literally would leave no marks you can see just how rounded that edge has gone there um and it's also on the edge there it's really started to smooth off as well but um i think that's probably been around about as long as i've been doing this this is probably around 27 years old this dresser so it's it's done it's done quite well but i don't really use it much now it's always it's always this one that I use. So that's the lead dresser. Um, also, you, also you're going to obviously need a hammer. Um, it is worth investing in a decent hammer. When I was an apprentice, I went to B and Q and I bought the cheapest hammer you could get. I started having a few swings with it, and then after a few weeks, I banged a nail in, and then the head flew off somewhere and it was never to be seen again. So um, then I invested in an S ring hammer, and this is this has been fantastic. It's the amount of use that it gets, it's, it's honestly worth getting a decent hammer. The only thing with this one is the handle does seem to sort of slip a little bit and sometimes I have to sort of like bang, just bang it back on. Um, but apart from that, it's, it's fine. It's all forged in one in one piece. Um, so I haven't got to worry about the head flying off on this one. So that was definitely worth getting. Also, I have my snips. These are, these are 12 inch. They're not gilbos, they're a cheaper version um these are actually made by eclipse um and to be honest with you i've had i've had gilbos in the past and the eclipse ones for me seem to seem to last longer um so i did move over to the eclipse version so as i say so they're 12 inch i've also got that's just a just another old pair that i've still got in there for some reason because they're still really really stiff they, they'll um, be great for cutting really fine lead also in here should have yeah a left-handed pair of snips as well these are actual gill bows um, and you'll be amazed actually just how much you do use the left-handed snips they're definitely definitely worth getting if sometimes you need to, to cut from the other way um, so you haven't got to use a knife they're, they're fantastic and these are great for cutting through the welts as well when you've got lots of thicknesses of lead these these go through it like butter um, they're quite expensive um, but if you're you know serious about doing this it'll, it'll be worth it so yeah they have left and right handed snips I think hammers come in left and right as well and also we have a knife um, this is quite a decent Stanley um, it's not retractable blade the retractable blade ones don't seem to last as well but I must admittingly that's probably me because sometimes I do whack it with a with a hammer to get through a real thick bit of lead or something but this one i've tried not to and in fact i've had it for one i haven't hit it yet um so you can need a knife as well um i've also got this that i use as a template for when i'm rounding off all my corners so i can get them all exactly the same and then we have 
bossing stick. See that's that's been hit a few times. We have a, a bossing mallet. Um, these are great. These these don't mark the lead at all compared to the wooden ones. The wooden ones they really do leave quite a mark behind. We've also got white bossing mallet too. This is this has lasted really well as well. And I've got my little level as well, which which comes in handy quite a lot of the time. And also I have a slightly bigger level, which, which I use when I'm kind of like setting out all the welts and things on dormer cheeks. Um, we have our bolster and we're wedging in our flashings, etc. Um, this one's got a guard on it, which is it's worth having. The amount of times you're going to hit it, I've saved my I've saved my fingers quite a few times with this guard. And I'll have a, a setting in stick as well. So that's that. Kind of like a, a thin little drip plate there, which I which I brought on eBay and just made myself. Um, it's, it lasted quite well actually, and it done it done the job for a while. And then later on, I did actually move over to this one that was made by Calder, which you can you know is a lot better quality. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I wish I invested years ago in one of those. It's, it's coming real handy it's just yes yeah, fantastic that is uh, and I have a wire brush here which I sometimes use when I'm when I'm cleaning up lead either for welding or if brick layers have got some some pug on the lead or something and also um, if your nozzle gets blocked on your welding gun you can just use one of these these little bits here and it just fits in the nozzle and that, that clears it out lovely um, a shave hook which I also use for, for cleaning up the lead when I'm welding. Um, I have a jointing chisel for the bits that I have to do by hand, you know, corners and stuff sometimes, or stuff where you can't get the grinder in, so it's worth having one of those. I have some seaming pliers. Um, the, these ones are actually adjustable. I can actually adjust the angle on these, although I never do, but if, if I needed to, I, I could. Um, and these, you know, just when you're when you're turning up your your drip edge, get it nice and tight. Then have a chase wedge. These come in various different sizes, coming coming good use. Uh, have my bottle key, which is very essential for turning on for turn on the bottles. That's we got here. We've also got. <laughs> An extremely battered up fire extinguisher but um, nevertheless it um, still works and it is obviously well worth having because you don't want to start welding and you get some smoke or something come up and you've got no means of trying to put it out so very important to make sure you've you've got this at all times with you to hand uh, rubber mallet this is generally what I use on my roll ends um, and also when I'm sort of like um, setting in bays and stuff and these, these are great it doesn't mark the lead at all um, the only thing you do find is they do tend to to split split down there so um, you do need to keep changing them um, yeah, and this is the size that I like to get I once brought one on eBay um, I was trying to judge what, what size it was I might have it in here actually yes I have I thought it was going to be that size and actually when it turned up it was cheaper and i know why now because <laughs> it's tiny um literally you get it out that, get that one out of a cracker but um, i have actually used it a few times but um trying to boss a roll end with that is yeah it takes takes some doing um also i've got a, a little setting in stick here which which the handle actually broke off one day um, but then do you know what I just I sawed it off and sometimes when you're in a, a small box gutter or something you can get that in there lovely um, so yeah so it actually is pretty cool and it's quite rounded that one as well because it's quite old which is quite handy just another another setting stick which has had its handle snapped off which I haven't bothered sawing off but it's just one it's just a slightly longer and a little bit sharper like a bit of a mystery to me as well to be honest i don't think i've been in the bottom for a while um, and then i've got my my soft brush i have a bevel here for when i'm getting angles for front aprons and stuff 
um, so I have a chalk line here. This this one's lasted really well, actually. This Irwin chalk line. Um, this was actually brought to me by a mate I was working with on one one Saturday, um, and I didn't have one. And he said, "Oh, I'll get you one," and he did. And this is yeah, it's been amazing. It's uh, it's lasted so long. I've had lots of other sort of like plasticky ones in the past, and this one because it's like an aluminium case and everything, it just just yeah, just lasted really well. Um, God, I ain't seen this for a while. Got a duck's foot here. This is good when you're doing sort of like, you know, on roll tiles and stuff. It really, really gets in there quite well. And you need to dress it in there. Obviously, we're going to need a tape measure. Um, it's quite essential. And I've got just an, another little shave hook in there. This one doesn't really need to be in there, to be honest. Actually, the head spins around. I think I've got that in there for emergencies. Um, yeah, just another pair of another pair of left-handed snips there. Again, they don't need to really be in there. They're just for some reason. If I lost the other ones, um, I've also got a, a scriber here, which I sometimes use. This is mainly more for hard metals, but um, I've actually I had this from my apprenticeship days as well. So this is probably about twenty-seven years old. And it's just it's just really good to save getting your tape measure out all the time. It's already got all the different measurements on there, and it just makes it does make things a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, that is mainly I think supposed to be for hard metals. And I've got another little level there, although it's, you can't really see the level on there anymore. But sometimes you could use that if you're just marking up step flushings or something, and it's got that little that little groove in there for, for bending step flashings, although I don't ever use it. I just always bend step flashings up on like a bit of roofing batten for, for getting the 25 mil that goes into the wall. I never, I never take the time to use it. I don't find it quicker at all, to be honest. That's that. Um, then I've got my, my little torch, which I recently got. It's a little propane bottle here. Um, and this is, I probably started heating lead up probably about two years ago. Um, when you're doing roll ends and stuff, if you give it a little blast, get get it a bit warm, it softens the lead a little bit. And then when when you're when you're dressing, it just honestly because you don't have to like hit it so hard, it just takes out all the marks. Um, yeah, especially on a cold day, it really helps the lead to move. So um, yeah, that was that was a good investment actually. Um, glad I got that. And then I've just got like a little scrubbing brush. I think I was on a job about two years ago, and um, although I'd oiled the lead on both sides, it's just I think it rained rained that night before the oil had proper chance to dry, and it, I did get some streaks on the slates. Um, so I ended up getting this wire brush, and I, luckily I managed to get it. Uh, sorry, this um, hard brush, and luckily I managed to to get the streaking off the slates. But it's so difficult trying to keep on top of it without it running sometimes. No matter how much you seem to oil the lead, it just sometimes you do still get it run through. Um, and then I've just got a couple of little adjustable spanners which I use um, for various different things. So that's in there. Um, yeah, and then there, there is like a little sparker there, which I never really use to like this. <laughs> you can tell I don't use it. The end's fallen off. <laughs> but um, initially, I thought it would be a great idea for um, for lighting my gas bottles, but I just always just use a lighter. It's just I just find it so much easier. Um, yeah, I really do with getting that out of here, to be honest. In fact, and you can see just how much rubbish has collected in the bottom of my tool bag. It does need a good good sort out. And I've just got a little pack of baby wipes in there. Um, when I'm doing sort of like pointing with, with mastic, it's just, oh God, we never used to have to do it, but we seem to do it all the time now. Um, and you just, you get it all over your fingers and this it just, it's just nice to clean, clean your fingers up when you're doing it. So I've always, I always carry baby wipes with me. Right. So that concludes what's in the actual toolbox. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to move out onto the bits when I'm, when I'm setting out a flat roof, etc. Um, so I've got my normal just like 600 roofing square there, which I also use when I'm when I'm generally cutting lead off the roll. Um, and you can also use that because it's 50 mil. You can use that to trim your splash laps on, on bays, etc. And also there's that drip plate again for when we're doing flat roofs, which is yeah, it's one made by Calder, um, and that is yeah, that's, honestly it's it's fantastic. That thing it's so rigid. It's, it's 
perfect. It just makes dressing the roll ends a, a bit easier. And then I have a big, bigger set square here, which really comes in handy when you're doing, you know, big lead flat roofs to make sure you're getting, getting your rolls nice and square. So that comes in lots of good use as well. Okay, so now let's move on to the electrical tools that you're going to need. We'll start with this um, battery angle grinder. When I first started, I used to have all 110 stuff, which meant I needed a transformer, uh, leads and everything, which were, were traipsing all over the place. And sometimes you're working on jobs, they had, they had no power. So I had to carry a generator as well, and it was just such a nightmare. Just And then obviously the leads, they just get caught on literally everything. If there's something they can get caught on, they will. Um, and then, you know, the battery equipment started getting better and better. and um, it's just so much easier. I mean, they, the batteries do last quite a long time as well, like when, you, when you're running it. Um, this is, you know, quite a, a powerful battery. And I think now you can actually get them better than this, which will last even longer. Um, so yeah, definitely worth getting a battery angle grinder, you know, for when you're running the traces and stuff. Um, then we've got here is um, SDS drill. Um, when I first started, I had a combi combi drill which was which was all right you know it was cheap and it done the job to a fashion but if i was trying to get into something tough or trying to get some screws in which were a little bit tough it just did not want to know at all um so then i got this um this sds drill and wow what a, what a difference honestly it just it goes through anything effortlessly um it's well well worth getting um and then i've got my impact driver which is which is also awesome um definitely worth having one of those as well now then i've got a, a site work light as well and this to be honest is a little bit of a luxury um i don't really use it that often um I've probably only used it on like one or two occasions um, when i've been inside somewhere knocking knocking bits up and it's been a bit dark i've just been a bit like oh i'll get my light out but <laughs> it's not really needed that much but i have got one anyway um and then I've got my radio as well. I mean, I, I generally always work on my own. So it's, it is quite nice just having a radio on in the background. A um, bit of entertainment um, makes the day go a bit quicker. So I've got my, I've got my radio. So, that's, so that is all the electrical stuff that I use. Then I've got my welding equipment here. And this is um, oxyacetylene porter pack with um, a Modelo torch number three nozzle on. I get a lot of comments, people saying, oh, do I, do I need oxyacetylene? Can I use propane? And, and the answer is, yes, you can. Um, it doesn't last as long, um, and I've never really used much of it myself. And I would say if you are serious about getting into this and doing lead welding and stuff, it is honestly worth investing in a decent welding kit and not just something cheap. Um, that's just not going to last and it's going to be harder to use and when you're in a tight spot trying to weld a bit of vertical and it's windy and everything else you'll be so thankful that you spent a few more quid and, and got something that's decent that's going to be easier to use because if it just makes your life easier and that if it's easier it's quicker and in the end it just it just pays for itself so that's that and then i've also got a, a telescopic ladder here and um, this is not too bad if you're if you're working it like putting up a pitch of a roof but when you're actually using it as a ladder it is a little bit sketchy but i don't actually have a roof rack um so i can't carry any other ladders really apart from ones like this so this is yeah this is what i carry and this one is actually about five meters long and it, it does get me out of trouble um for not having a roof rack so um yeah that's pretty pretty handy as well so that concludes the, all the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you are wanting to get into this trade, it is the tools that you are going to need as well. Um, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can check me out on Instagram at SFV Leadworks. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hopefully catch you in the next. Cheers.